It's a horrible day in England. It's a, hor it's a horrible day in England. It's really moving from autumn to winter. Um, I'm just outside working on this hot point WML 540, I think it is. I'm going to strip it down and make it ready just so that it drives straight off the motor. It's the one with the failed bearings from the video on YouTube that I put a few weeks ago. That would be back in September, October. So we're in November at the moment. And this is just be an overview video of what I'm doing. So this is a hot point WML, or is it 540G? I'm at the back. Maybe show you what it looks like at the front. So it's the one with the failed bearings. I just want to go in and take as much of it off as I can. To see what's inside. Rewire the motor. Another screw down here. Rewire the motor so that it runs like a hot wire, I guess. So it's pretty grimy inside. Bearings have failed, and that's where that brown sludgy water's come from. This is the motor here. The belt and all is in place, so it should just be a matter of unclipping this thing here. Get the earth cable off first, then pull this off. Sometimes it has a clip that just slots out, just slots out like that, so just pulled it straight out. Belt's okay, it's on, so I just need to set up a set of cables to these pins here and we'll figure out which one goes where. I'm gonna need a cable power cord, so I'm gonna just take the one off this machine. So you get in the top, there's just one screw, two screws in the back. Keep it up there. The top should pull backwards. Thump it from the front, maybe. Oh, it's that side. That's it. Just give it up. Give it a bash. Pull it off. And so in here, on this side usually, will be the power cord connections. They go into a stupid switchy thing. Stupid connector block. I've got to pull the whole connector block out. It has got spade connectors in there, so I guess I'll find a way to pull them out or pop them out of there, because that's what I, I want ones with spade connectors on them. Oh no, the power goes straight to this thing. Oh, well, that's rubbish. I can't use that one. So I need a different power cord. Luckily, I was working on a microwave earlier on salvaged power cord from the microwave and it has the right type of spade connector just like that it won't focus on that but hey so i've got to figure out on this on this power block here which cable goes where so let's clear these cables out of here make a bit of space Gotta figure out which is which. So looking at the back of it, you can see that the two red tacos are at the bottom. It looks like this white one here, which goes. I don't know where that goes. Uh, I'm reluctant to take this out because once you take it out, it's a pain to put it back together. So let's go for trial and error. I've got this little power box set up, which I will plug my cable into and make sure that every time before I do anything, it is not live. 
and I've got it on a 5 amp supply which is not very much so it'll trip it straight away if anything goes wrong. I've explained this before in other videos, we need a power to go into a brush, from one brush to the other brush through the, through the motor, then come out through a jumper cable like this into one of the windings and then back out again to the power supply. So we know the bottom two are not connected, so I'm going to suggest that the fourth one from the bottom, center one, will be joined to its neighbor, and I'm going to make a guess that the three windings are top three, and that the two bottom ones are the tackle, well, that's not a guess, I know that, and that the one that I'm plugging on the live cable to now is a brush, and that the one I'm plugging this cable onto is a winding. And I really don't know if that's true or not, but I'll just do it and see what happens. So plug it into a five amp supply. Turn that on. Set the set, set to live. Switch it on, that trips it, so that's not one. So plug that out again. I'll try my neutral above. We're not live at the moment, so there's no one so Try that. Put it back in, go live again. Sounds like there's something inside in the machine there. Um, so I've plugged it out again, and I'm just going to cover the jumper cable with a bit of tape so that it doesn't touch the other contacts. So we're going jumping from the second to top to the, we're going to jump. We're just leaving out this third one, really, the one in the middle. So I'm going to cover it with a bit of this ins red insulating tape just to stop it getting caught. You can get these that are shielded already with little bits of plastic and stuff, but I had this jumper cable lying around and that's what's gonna get used. So that's one end done. the other end and this is just so that when the machine is shaking itself to pieces when it starts to bang around and the cables start to get tugged by everything they won't try and fall off or arc against the other ones and kill it so make sure they're all pushed in now, it has one of these earths on it. I don't normally earth these things because I think you're already trying to wreck them, so does it really make a blind bit of difference if you earth it? I wouldn't bother. And with this thing, it hasn't got a spade connector. There's a little spade connector there that I can, I should be able to snap it onto if it had one, but this one doesn't, so I ain't gonna bother. I'm not gonna bother with this one. It won't be earthed. I'm gonna find a way to cable tie this cable on here so that when it's whopping around, it's not putting a load of pressure on the cable. So I just need to find something to loop it onto. There's a bit of metal there, so there should be something to hook it onto. I've got a long cable tie and a short one. I could hook it onto the motor as well. The belt looks a bit funky. It's getting stuck on something. It's come off the, the belt's come off the motor already. So that's not good. It's not come off the motor, it's come off the drum, so I'll have to have a look at why that has happened. But what can I tie this onto? Get that cable tie in like that. That'll do. Put this like this. Strap it on like that. Nice and dangerous. I'm 
we could get another one across the whole lot. I don't like cable ties because they're a single use thing and you can't really recycle them. You can try if you want, but it's a bit of a pain. But this is what usually, one of the things that usually goes wrong. So, I'll get that strapped on there. And then let's have a look in the top, see where that belt's gone. Yeah, it's run to the back and run off, so... Pretty weird. It's, on, it's still on on this side, so it should just be a matter of... Sliding it round. What I suspect is that it's on the wrong, it's on the wrong side there. So to do this, I've got to climb up on top. It does seem weird, it's getting... Could be just because the bearings are so fucked. It's running right into the inside. So I'll pop it out to another... Pulley. On this side. it it's wired to go so let's have a quick look at how I've done that again so this is how I've wired this hot point WML 540 I've got the live going into the third tab from the bottom then I've got a jumper cable coming from the tab above that to the second from the top and I've got the neutral at the second from the top and that will wire it to run in what some people call suicide mode um, it's called direct wiring should do it. What I also typically do at this point is strip out any other parts that I don't want but or that I, that I don't want to leave in the machine but I don't really care about this machine so what I might just do is put a bit of wire around the springs in the top so that they don't uh, jump off in use. <laughs> 